TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Today on How TV. Inshallah, in the month of Ramadan, I'll try as much as possible to complete two Qurans and I'll make this very, very like I've never done before. Uh, blessings and rahmah uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan and atonement and expiration of a lot of sins committed before the month of Ramadan and I don't know, like a lot of things like a lot of perks you just get to enjoy in the month of Ramadan that you don't get to enjoy in other months and a lot of blessings like that. The basic thing is achieving everything and um, the consistency. So that is just that is my main focus now. As okay on the first day now you may be successful doing your tilawa, successful reading uh, Islamic novel, successful taking commentaries of the Quran. But then the consistency over the 30 days. You should you shouldn't make that okay the first day when the morale is there and then you are doing good and then over the the over the period you are then not up to the tax or whatever. So just the consistency basically. What I look forward to in the month of Ramadan is Tilawa, Tafsir and Tahfiz. The teas of Ramadan. Tilawa, Tadabur, Tafsir and a lot of Tadabur, Tafsir, Tahfiz. Tilawa, Tahmidat, Tahlilat, Tesbihat, and a lot, lot of more. Hmm, itikaf. Hmm, the last 10 days. Why? I don't know, it's just special. Um, I got to go to mocks, like read Quran and do that thing. And like, I'm not outside, there's no TV, there's no distraction. I just get to do like the really cool things, reading Quran and praying and staying up nights. I like that part most. If your wish was to be granted this night, and I was to ask you which mosque would you want to go and do it again, which mosque would you choose? <sighs> okay, um, <laughs> I really don't know. You like mosque? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, which mosque would you like to do it about? So, that's okay. And that's, you just appear there. Last 10 days. I don't know. Any mosque? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay, well, maybe a mosque in Saudi Arabia, maybe. So you like good things? <laughs> Who doesn't? Tell me. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on our TV. Ah, inshallah, I'm looking forward to us the lectures and um, the wahma in the month. So I'm looking forward to memorizing my Quran very much and um, reading and and doing much more deeply than before and finding uh, forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now. I look for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's all. That's all. It's pleasure. For me, Ramadan is the kind of month that I know Allah accepts my prayers the most. So, so many things have happened the past few months and everything. So, I, I'm looking forward to Ramadan so that I'll ask for forgiveness. Plenty things you've done. Uh, forgive <laughs> forgiveness and I'll ask Allah for so many other things. So ah success in school. Um may Allah <laughs> beautify my inner thoughts and outer and outer 
myself too. I look forward to the night of Ramadan. All the nights in Ramadan. All the nights. So you're saying you're gonna be up all night? Inshallah. All 30 nights. Inshallah. Except okay, except maybe if I'm off so lot. The ability to serve Allah and know that I'm going to have triple and more reward than ordinary months and and uh, self-consciousness and the fact that um, you're going to use Ramadan to feel pangs of hunger for you to know how other people that don't that don't have um, that cannot afford daily bread how they feel like and for you to be more compassionate. I look forward to and, and I look forward to the night of my last cadre. It's a calf. The last ten days. Okay. She said it's a calf. Don't tell me what you're saying too. It's hazard. Wow. May I make this for one of us? Well, it, it means uh, it, it is a speci special month for me. And uh, it is the month of the Quran. And uh, it is actually a special month that is holy. And uh, God uh, showers his forgiveness, his blessings uh, on the Muslims. So it is a, a, a month that provides us the opportunity to seek closeness to God through act of worship during the days of the fasting as well as through act of the worship during this night. So it is a month, it is a month that uh, I'm looking forward to, well, not just for myself but uh, uh, with other members of my family and I've set specific targets actually for the month of Ramadan so I pray that God will enable me to achieve those targets inshallah. I wish, I wish the same thing for the rest of the Muslims as well as for the entire nation as well. The month of Ramadan for the Muslims uh, is a blessing on the nation itself. The, the Rahama of God that will descend during that month will be like the rain that will touch everybody and will not discriminate against everybody. Muhammad Sallallahu in, in an authentic adit says during that month the shaitan is shamed down. So that is one of the Rahama of Allah through the Muslims for the for, for the mankind a lot of things um and it's even good to do more charity during ramadan since it's more about <laughs> charity now um do lots of nice things during ramadan like help your brothers you get much more reward very light things you get so much reward and um you show up your heart uh, your prayers getting answered and all that it's a good time i mean you have a feeling of the less privileged as well you are eating so much, you can't even walk after eating so much. So when you're hungry, I mean, you see a poor man on the road, sometimes you have to give them something. You get Hal TV your Muslim lifestyle channel. Living alone has its perks. You wake up when you feel like it, hang out at night, eat when you want, do what you want, when you want. It's great not having to worry about anyone but yourself. But I feel like I want to give back to my community now. So I decided to volunteer at the Masjid Weekend School and teach some kids how to read Arabic and Quran. Some of my fondest memories growing up were at weekend school, so this is going to be interesting considering it'll be my first time there not as a student, but as a teacher. I hope the kids don't do to me what I used to do to my teachers. Hopefully not, considering I'm friends with their dads. Though it was a little rough in the beginning, I didn't feel that I did too bad of a job. 
Eventually we got into a rhythm and the kids even seemed to be enjoying themselves. But then towards the end of class, I received a call from a good friend of mine. I could tell the kids were getting bored, but I didn't really care too much since their parents were supposed to pick them up in 10 minutes anyway. So I told the kids to just take a break and relax until I finished my call. The call took longer than expected, and when I came back, I was surprised to see only one child there. When I asked him about the other boy, Samir, he said he was bored and decided to leave the mosque alone. Oh no. Oh my god. Though I'll never forget how I felt, the moment was a blur. I didn't know where Samir went or what to do or how to find him. My heart was racing and all sorts of terrible thoughts were going through my mind. Then I remember that I left another child at the mosque, so I had to go back and make sure that he didn't run off as well. As I ran back to the door of the mosque, right in front of me was Samer's father. And he could obviously see I was distressed, so when he asked me what happened, I told him that Samer left while I was on the phone and I wasn't paying attention and I couldn't find him. And at that moment, I'd wished I never even existed. It was a nightmare scene out of a movie. Though the boys were found, Every time I think back to this incident, I get mad at myself for being so irresponsible and for not paying more attention to those kids. I knew that if I had been at work, I wouldn't have answered my phone in the first place. I obviously didn't know what it meant to be in charge of a couple of kids, and I seemed irresponsible in the eyes of Samer's father. He saw me as a teenager who needed to grow up, and he was right, and that was my last day with Samer. When he heard the story, my uncle told me to take it easy on myself, but to realize that responsibility is not limited to parenting or being a husband or a paid employee. We have to be careful with everything and everyone that Allah has put under our care, even if for a moment. The Prophet peace be upon him said, each of you is a shepherd and each of you is responsible for his flock. And that day, those kids were my flock and I failed them. Personal accountability is stressed throughout the prophetic tradition. And we usually think of it solely in terms of spiritual matters like worship and sin. But our social obligations are just as important as our individual ones. And that's why you find that Umar ibn al-Khattab as the leader of the greatest nation on earth would cry wondering if a donkey under his rule but in a faraway land would testify against him on the day of judgment for not fulfilling his rights towards it. The Prophet peace be upon him stressed the importance of avoiding heedlessness whether you were walking on the road and came across something harmful or hosting a guest or walking past a neighbor, to pay attention to the rights of people around you and in fact your entire environment. And when people give you a task or trust you with something, don't disappoint them. Anas anhu says that one time the Prophet peace be upon him sent me on an errand and I got caught up with the other kids and started playing with them. So the Prophet peace be upon him came to me and gently admonished me lovingly saying Unais, which was my nickname. Have you delivered what I asked you to? Rasulullah, what would you have said to me that day when I almost lost that child? You taught us to be better than that and to treat every child as our own, every place on earth as our home, and every stranger like family. Sallallahu alayka ya Rasulullah. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Well, it means a lot. Uh, it is a month that, insha'Allah, uh, 
by imbibing the lessons of that month, it elevates one in terms of one's uh, taqwa, in terms of one's you know, consciousness of Allah. As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala told us in a verse in Surah, in surah 2, at Surah Al-Baqarah, He said, Kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. He said, the fasting is been made obligatory upon you. You know, the way it has been made obligatory upon the generations before you so that you may attain righteousness. Because this taqwa is what you need to attain the Jannah. It's, the, it's a condition, it's a, it's what, you know, a condition for attaining the Jannah. So, uh, it is, you know, alhamdulillah, a period that one will always be happy, you know, inshallah, if Allah blesses one to be able to witness it. It means a lot to me. It's a pious month. Ramadan is, is a month of blessing. Ramadan is a month of generosity. It's a very good, it's a, it's a nice month. Ramadan is, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a month of blessings, yeah. It's a month of blessing. Ramadan, to me, is, it means abundance. Because I made a promise to Allah when I was in 200 level. And when I graduated, Allah fulfilled this part of the promise. So every time Ramadan comes, I tell myself it's a new opportunity. It's a month of abundance. It's a month of plenty that I can always tap from. Well, Ramadan, to, for every Muslim, Ramadan is, is a month where, you know, you are supposed to capitalize on, on the good, um, good deeds, you know, earn maximum rewards from your good deeds and make sure you don't sin. And your sins, all your sins will be, will be removed. Ramadan means it's a, it's a month whereby both the rich and the poor come together, pray together, eat together, they are iftar. So there's no much difference between both the poor and the rich. So we all supplicate, we all fast, irrespective of um, where you're living, where you, are, where you are from, we all pray. That's why it's when in the Ramadan, during the Maghrib, during the Isha, everybody is there. So we are all praying. So it's a, it's a lovely message to everybody. It means uh, a lot. It means cleanse cleansing, you know, proper, deep cleansing, spiritual cleansing, physical cleansing, and social cleansing. It, 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 means, it means, to me, it, it means a period where both the rich, the poor, the young, they will come together in one voice, you know, to meet God. To me, it, it means a medium whereby the rich people who always have the access to everything in life know how those who do not have, you know, know it, it, it make them to know how they feel. For instance, if you are the one who used, who used to get uh, three square meals regularly, every day, no, no asu, uh, there's no fuel in Nigeria now. Some people are not even bothered about that. They don't know it because they are for, they are fuel, who is always fuel, they are generally to everything. They don't know it, they have the money. But if once in a while you, you go on fasting and you discover that, oh my God, so is this how those people who are perpetually hungry, is this how they feel? It makes other people to know, oh, okay, I should be able to be more patient, be more considerate and be more compassionate, you know, about the other. It's a period where everybody comes together in one voice to say, thank you, God. Forgive us, God. Provide more for us, God. Holy month. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It means holy month. Like, you pray, you get close to Allah. Hello. Ramadan. Okay. It's like that, that time when I can get to, it's like reset. The time when I can actually get to, because the environment is everywhere. The environment is very um, conducive to. Is, 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 Islam is easier. Yeah, Ramadan. Ramadan 
comes with this total package because it comes with this, I don't know, maybe when you notice, you notice that when, during Ramadan you feel the atmosphere change, there's this change in the surrounding, in the atmosphere, maybe because, I don't know, maybe it comes with hypoglycemia, I don't know. But just come with, there's a change in the atmosphere, there's, there's reduction in what you say, the way you talk, the food, maybe because the energy is reduced also, and it comes with this total peaceful thing. How do it? <laughs> Some people, it is only during the Ramana that they go to the mosque. You don't know. <laughs> They will go, see, during the, we call it the Asamu, for us in our age, they call it Asamu, you see, all those people, even the old people, the young people, those who never come to mosque, I mean, they will call, at least once in a while, at least once in a year, it's a period where people come together to, 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 to praise God. To me, I feel Ramadan is, you should be at your best behavior in that, you should be, like, be the closest person to Allah, do all the good things, like, your iman is supposed to be at its peak. You just have to be as holy as holy can get. Sorry, Ramadan. Ramadan means a lot. I think it's um, it's a month of spiritual upliftment. It's a month of forgiveness. It's a month of of just rejuvenating yourself as a Muslim. The idea of the a single month in a year is like a school. Yeah, it's like a school where you go for training. So you, you're trained about your emotions. You're trained about your ego. You're trained about I mean, you know, wealth, you're trained about so many things, people, interactions with people and all sorts. So it's, it's that one school that Allah designed for Muslims to go to every year and learn things so that the coming year, they can be better Muslims because they've learned a lot in terms of interactions with people and all sorts. So Ramadan is that school that one should always be in and I can't wait for it to come. It's, it's a period of abstinence, like um, in all ramifications of abstinence. Just you know, look the other way, turn the other eye, just be calm, be yourself, be a Muslim. It, it makes me closest to Allah, so I look forward to it because that month, in the whole year, I'm always the most pious, the most, um, I do the right things. Um, I'd say Ramadan to me is time to reflect and stop certain things that I wouldn't want to do anymore and not go back to it from that point. HAL TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Join us again tomorrow for more. Here we have to clarify the fake rep repentance and the sincere repentance. Sincere repentance is when you go, when you, when you do any wrong and you come around to regret what you have done. Not only regretting it, learning from it that you will not go near it again. That is what we call sincere repentance. So can you say keep watching Al TV in Aousa? Al TV. Alright, we Kutakalang H A L T V Hal TV. <laughs> what did you just say? Kutakal what? Kuitakalang Hal TV. Keep watching Hal TV. Thank you very very much. Sawak.
Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel.